Hey YouTube, it's ICU, and today I'm going to compare Samsung's increasingly popular Galaxy S4 Android Jelly Bean powered smartphone against Apple's all new flagship iPhone 5S. Now to preface, I just wanted to say that the iPhone 5S and Galaxy S4 are just phones, and they're unquestionably two of the best phones on the market right now, so there's really no need to get heated in the comments. Like I said, they're both great and definitely capable devices, and different people will choose them to accommodate their personal needs. And with that out of the way, I'm going to get into this comparison. To start off, let's Let's take a closer look at the latest of the two devices, the iPhone 5S, which was released last month, September 20th, 2013. With the 5S, Apple has maintained overall the same design as the device's predecessor, except for the addition of new color options, the Touch ID fingerprint sensor, and a rear dual LED true tone flash. The 5S has the same 4-inch 1136 by 640 326 pixels per inch retina display. The left of the device features a nano SIM tray, whereas the right is equipped with volume volume buttons and a silent toggle switch. The power and lock button sits on the top with the headphone jack, microphone, speaker and lightning connector data and transfer port on the bottom. A secure Touch ID fingerprint scanner is built into the home button which allows users to easily and safely bypass the lock screen using only their finger. The Galaxy S4 features a multitude of sensors for a few really awesome and a lot of really gimmicky features. Unlike the iPhone, the S4's power and lock button is located on the right of the device with the volume rocker on the left. A headphone jack and IR blaster sit on the top whereas the bottom houses a micro USB port and a microphone. The S4 offers a massive 5 inch 1920 by 1080 400 141 pixels per inch display, which is built with Corning Gorilla Glass 3. Unlike iOS devices, the Galaxy S4 features a removable polycarbonate plastic back, which adds the convenience of expandable memory and battery swapping, but detracts from how the S4 feels in the hand. Aluminum and or glass phones like the iPhone, HTC One, and Nexus 4 simply feel higher quality. Now I'm going to use a cross-platform benchmark tool called Geekbench to measure the performance of both phones. Geekbench 3 takes into account multiple system resources sources and performs dozens of tests to give the most accurate numeric representation of how well devices actually perform. I also close out of all running apps on both devices to ensure accurate results. While the test is running, I want to discuss some specs. So on the left, the S4 is packing a 1.9 GHz quad-core Snapdragon 600 processor from Qualcomm, whereas the iPhone 5S on the right is powered by a wicked fast 1.3 GHz 64-bit dual-core A7 chip. Now although the S4 CPU is clocked, faster and has two additional cores, the results may surprise you. Skipping ahead, the 5S finished way before the S4 with a single core score of 1411 and a multi-core score of 2550. Skipping ahead again, the S4 pulls in second place with a single core score of 685 and a multi-core score of 1861, far behind the 5S's score, but that's to be expected considering the 5S is not only the newer device but it's also the only smartphone on the market at the moment with a CPU that features 64-bit architecture effectively future-proofing Apple's iOS device lineup. It will definitely be really interesting to see how well 64-bit Android phones will perform because of course they will eventually be released. It's inevitable. Going over the specs again, we have a 1.3 GHz CPU on the 5S and a quad-core 1.9 GHz CPU on the S4 with 1 GB of RAM on the 5S and 2 GB of RAM on the Galaxy S4. Now let's talk about screen brightness because that's definitely important when comparing devices and doing visual tests. So the bright on the S4 is cranked up to max, and in spite of that, it's really hard to see the screen in direct sunlight. I actually had to turn up the exposure on my camera substantially to ensure that you'd be able to even see the display. At its brightest setting, the 5S is about 30% to 40% brighter than the S4, and it doesn't impact battery drain as much either, because the display is substantially smaller, although the smaller display is viewed by some as a downside. Getting into picture quality comparisons between the two, I'm first going to show you guys that the brightness is at the same level on both, although it will have a slightly negative impact on pictures displayed on the iPhone 5S, it'll somewhat wash out images due to its screen being brighter. Again, it's always hard to convey image quality over video, you really have to be there in person to appreciate both. The S4 with its 13 megapixel camera takes some really awesome pictures, and through some clever software, Samsung is able to pre-enhance photos by over-exaggerating color to make images pop. One thing that I really noticed is that the 5S is incredibly fast when HDR is enabled on both, which actually takes and combines three different images at different exposures. Due to its improved 64-bit A7 processor, the 5S can take HDR images instantly, whereas the S4 has to do quite a bit of processing before you can move on to your next shot. Also 
Also, thanks to Android zoom capabilities, the S4 is able to zoom in on the smallest details after the picture has been taken, whereas the 5S can only zoom in to a fixed point. Even if you were able to zoom in further though, chances are good the S4 would show more detail when fully zoomed. That's not to say that the 5S doesn't take great pictures though, it really does, and Apple has proved that by leaving the megapixel count at 8. To do so, they've increased the actual size of the megapixels themselves and have done some really awesome image processor work. Panoramas look great on both, and the 5S finally has two new and impressive camera modes, Burst and 120 frames per second 720p slow-mo video. It also occurred to me when doing my test that the 5S is able to focus better on closer objects. Performing some quick browser tests using the Chrome app on both, you'll notice that they search the web at about the same speed, but tapping on a site reveals that the 5S loads even mobile content noticeably faster. When visiting my site, it seems as though the S4 will finish first when the 5S pulls ahead and loads all elements before the S4. Now both are really great at browsing, and I think the end user won't really notice a major difference between the two. Another interesting thing to note though is that with the release of iOS 7, Apple introduced some pretty fancy yet time-consuming app launch and close animations. It takes a fraction of a second longer to launch new apps or switch tasks on the 5S than it does on the S4. It's nothing major, but it can be a slight inconvenience for some. And speaking of iOS 7, the latest firmware that was released alongside the 5S, for those of you who aren't aware, the new version of Apple's mobile operating system introduces quite a number of welcomed additions and enhancements, including a system-wide redesign, control center for easy access to different settings, major Siri improvements including the ability to adjust settings through the virtual personal assistant, and a reimagined multi-page folder system to name a few. But by far my favorite feature on the 5S, and the thing that sets it apart from any device, is Touch ID. Fingerprint data is even encrypted and stored locally on the A7 chip for added personal security. Now, users who pick the iPhone over Android devices also tend to do so because of its simplicity, which can be a double-edged sword for those who are looking for more customizable options, but it does allow for reliability and quick and seamless multitasking. Also, one thing that's always stood out to me and has continued to do so over the years is the quality of applications. Because Apple controls devices and iOS, it's a walled garden, if you will. Apps tend to be higher quality because developers don't have to accommodate a large number of devices, and Apple has higher standards than Google. If you don't believe me, just ask developers who are constantly approved faster on Android than iOS. iCloud and all of Apple's multi-platform cloud-based services are also incredible and offer a seamless way to switch from phone to tablet to computer, all while having instant access to data that was created on the last. Now, Android phones stand out to consumers for a few really good reasons. First, they tend to have larger displays, like the 5-inch 1080p one found on the S4. You can customize them to no end, which, like iOS's simplicity, can also be a double-edged sword if you're just looking for something easy, but for most, it's a plus. In fact, the S4 looks horrible out of the box with its annoying touch widths overlay in my opinion, so I installed a stock jelly bean theme to completely change the look, animations, and overall feel. You can also install a ton of other different visual and system tweaks from the Play Store, even emulators. The S4 also has a lot of interesting and unique features, some more useful than others. Air view, air gesture, smart stay, and smart scroll are just a few. My favorite though has to be multi-window support. With the help of root access and a simple app from the Play Store, you can open up the multi-window bar and throw any app into multi-view mode, which traditionally is exclusive to a few pre-installed apps from Samsung. Multi-window is really great though, it lets you run two apps on the screen simultaneously and it intelligently switches or adjusts the view depending on your preferences. Alright, and that concludes my iPhone 5S versus Samsung Galaxy S4 comparison. Remember, they're both great, and you really can't go wrong with either, it just depends on what you're looking for. As always, I just gave you guys some facts, information, and some really great comparisons to intelligently make the choice between the two. Now don't forget, it's not too late to enter in to win my $100 Amazon gift card giveaway. Just be sure to write this video up and leave a relevant comment below. If you don't know what to leave in the comments, let me know which one you prefer and why. Also, if your comment is rude, derogatory, and or crude, your entry will be invalid. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more great videos and to be updated more often just be sure to like me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter. And until next time, this is ICU signing out.